this red? Look at you. Well, I think we got some good choices. number of you have, I probably should say, have been to these retirement receptions before, and uh, it's just a nice way to express appreciation for people who have given of themselves to the school for many years. Our custom for retirees is that we have an event like this with friends and family and colleagues and some students. We present the honoree with a, a book of letters like this one I'm holding up. And these are letters uh, in which people have expressed more personal appreciation for the honorees. It's not too late to write a letter. So if you haven't had the chance to do so and would like to, please write the letter and send it to the honoree and then he or she can put it in, in this book. We will also show a video of interviews from friends and colleagues about the honoree, which you'll see momentarily. And, and then Mr. McAllister here on my left will give each of the honorees a copy of the videos, all of the videos actually, including today's event. And then I'll ask each honoree to make a few comments, uh, just uh, to give them a, a chance to come to the microphone. So there are four people we are recognizing today, as I think you know. Maggie Chen, I came to know her through her son, Hanlon, who transferred to MBA in the ninth grade. He has traveled uh, here today from California to celebrate his mom, so it's nice to see you back, Hanlon, on the campus. Her amazing math mind and love of teaching convinced me to hire her in 1996. I should probably add my wife nudged me to do so as well. Maggie and her husband Roger had invited us to dinner. Uh, and at that dinner we learned about her background and her teaching career in China. And as I said, the, that was the motivation to say, well, this could be a, an amazing teacher at MBA. The story that follows is worthy of a film. Maggie knew that uh, she had some challenges with her English. She went to what was then Nashville Tech at the time to take English classes. She sat in on English classes at MBA and worked incredibly hard to become a teacher here and, and someone that excelled. Uh, you'll hear about that in the film. 
Fran Stewart, our next honoree, came to MBA in 2010. She joined MBA to head and to lead our junior school. I knew her through her leadership in Nashville's public schools and also as a relatively close neighbor. She was a neighbor and friend who became a greater and greater advocate for MBA. It has been a joy to see Fran embrace the culture and the world of a boys' school and to talk regularly about how much she loves times like our assemblies when she sees that culture played out. I'm sorry, our second nominee is Vicki Mayhew, also uh, arriving at MBA like Maggie in, in 1996. Vicki was hired to assist me and my office when the headmaster's long-serving assistant, Miss Garriott, retired. Vicki has always willingly done what she could to help the school. She moved into the Alumni and Development Office to serve as the office manager, assistant to the director, and then our data processing manager. It's been a joy to see her quiet strength and presence be part of the MBA campus these past 26 years. And finally, it was also in 1996 when I got to know Dick Clauser, someone I refer to as one of the kindest, most generous of spirit, and supportive individuals on the MBA campus. His laugh, goodness, and care for others are all infectious. He has embraced his role as a teacher, a college counselor, and a coach with a conviction to know and to love our boys. My friends in San Diego who worked with Dick often told me how much he added to that community. He has exceeded those expectations at MBA. So without further ado, we're going to begin now with a video about Maggie, and I'll ask her to come up in a little bit. So Maggie, if you'd please come up for a moment, I could present you with this book, and we'd love for you to say a word. I'm just going to put it right here. Thank you so much. Thanks to everyone for being here to attend my retirement reception. I cannot believe that I have been teaching here for 26 years. And you all know I grew up and uh, I was born and grew up in China and had some teaching experience there. After I moved to the United States, I thought my teaching career was over. I have never thought I could teach in the United States until MBA opened its door to me. So thanks for MBA giving me this opportunity. And I especially would thank to Ms. Julia. Uh, he hired me 26 years ago. At that time, I could not speak fluent English. I used a dictionary holder to the classroom to teach. I even didn't know the word line segment. But everything in my mind was Chinese. So I just, Ms. Julia always supported me and believed in me and, uh, and uh, encouraged me during my really difficult time. I told it, honestly, I cried many times. So, but then, so, um, I also need to thank to, uh, thank to a lot of teachers, students, parents, they have given me the support. So if I cannot survive without all of these supports, and especially, I need to thank to my son, Henley. And his excellence brought me here. I honestly, I told you, he started to prove my writing comments, helped me to write an email to reply to uh, parents' email, students' recommendation letter, everything. He helped me, even when he he was in college before the exam. As long as I need, I see that's emergency. I need to reply this email in 30 minutes because some email, and he immediately helped me to write because I say I, I don't know use what kind of word to write like um, appropriate. So he helped me a lot. Uh, today, uh, yesterday, he flew from California to attend my reception. Helen, would you please stand up? Stand up. So, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
Thank you, thank you. And he told me when we came to school, drove together, and he just said, Mom, I just tell you one thing. If you can, one day you can dream in English, then your English is good enough. This is my French teacher talk to me, say, if you, one day you can dream in French, your French is good enough. So now I tell you, if you can dream in English, that means your English is good enough. But one day I really dream in English, I told Helen, I dream in English. <laughs> yeah. So during the past 26 years, so I enjoy every moment working at the MBA. Although I'm excited about my retirement, I still feel a little I'm sad about leaving the place which I have been te uh, enjoyed working for so long time. I, I will miss MBA, miss all my colleagues and the students a lot. I wish MBA the best. Thank you. Now, Vicki Mayhew. So, Vicki, we'd love for you to come up for a moment. I did not prepare anything. So, just off the cuff, I just want to say it's been I'm going to cry. It's been a pleasure. I've worked with so many wonderful people, and I'm going to miss you all. That's all. Now, Fran Stewart. So proud to have Fran come on up. <laughs> How many ways can you say thank you? Um, when I came to MBA, I really did love the school. Uh, and I've always loved working with boys, and I've gotten to know them through the neighborhoods. Uh, one time, I made a, uh, I think it was Coach Pruitt, and we had a plan that they would run through my house on their way in their afternoon uh, travels. Um, so this has been, in many, in many ways, a dream come true for me. And um, partly uh, because when you're sitting, I spent 38 years in public school, and I loved it. I loved all my schools, but when you are sitting there every day, you're trying to, to do the impossible, and there's always a big, long list of things you can't support at the end of the day, and so when I came to MBA, I got to see what my fantasy would look like. If I could have, you know, when I sat in my office in public school and I thought about, well, if I just could do this, this, and this, or if this, this, and this could happen, the world would really work. And it does work at MBA. And it is the formula. And it is having the teachers and the resources and just the day-to-day -day camaraderie that allows us all to work the best we can together with the boys. I do love the times together in Brad who's right. I do love assemblies. I love sleeping in that tent with 141 boys at Long Mountain. I love taking them to Atlanta and getting them dirty and going through 75,000 paintballs. But I also love this time of year when I see them really buckling down and the air over in Massey is filled with exam preparation. So I consider myself a really lucky person. For the better part of 50 years, I've gotten to do exactly what I always wanted to do. I was kind of late coming to the administrative end because in public school I thought you had to wear those funny football pants. And so they had to convince me that I didn't have to wear those funny football pants and to be an administrator. 
And for all of you who accepted me, who answered my questions, why, who pulled me out of all those rabbit holes I found at MBA because I was asking why, um, I say thank you. I say thank you to the parents and to the students. Uh, I have learned so much. And um, I will be eternally grateful for my time on the Hill. And uh, I will miss you, but I'm just a, two porches away, and it's always open. I wish you the best. Thank you. And Dick Kloster. Kind and thoughtful and predictable, and um, and he is somebody that we that Dick Clauser had, and tried to watch him and do the same, and just love. He has a great sense of humor, a great wit. So here he comes. Uh, all right. Uh, I have to ask permission. I know y'all been here a while. If I have three pages of big print, is that all right? <laughs> we okay? All right, I appreciate it. Now, I've been walking the halls of MBA since 1969. Uh, some of those halls no longer exist, and some of the new halls, I don't even know where they go. Uh, but uh, I've loved every second of this place, and I just... Uh, Got a lot of thank yous I want to say, and if I don't say thank you to you, I'm really saying thank you to you, okay? But thanks beyond thanks for all of you folks that are here to see the four of us graduate from the MBA world to the next. You awesome folks, which means every single face, young and old, I have ever greeted or grinned at walking these halls, you got to know how important your smiles have been. I got an allergy. One second. Uh, your smiles, your yes sirs, your patiently helping this old man. Those are my moments of happiness every single day. I see folks now that I taught and coached come back to this beautiful campus and think of our moments together. How awesome is the circle of life. At the alumni soccer game two weeks ago, we gave the players uh, the varsity uniforms, the jerseys, and last time I saw them, you know, varsity jerseys are never too fit. Well, this team of alums kind of looked custom fit all of a sudden. Uh, they had all gained a couple pounds here and there, but, it, but the point is, of the whole thing, is after that game, the, the just sincere hugs and thank yous and stories of the times together doing battle on the field are what the world is about. I need to bless a moment, especially from six years ago, a moment God blessed me with a final gift to my mama. Uh, and this was when Todd Moran offered me membership into Totemoy. Now, when I got offered into Totemoy, I felt the the skies rumble above me as Mr. Carter uh, heard that I had gotten Totemoy because I was <laughs> I was not exactly the perfect picture perfect child. I was close. No, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't at all. Uh, all right, but uh, uh, that day I, I received Totemoy and uh, the young the awesome young man applauded. Uh, and my mom didn't know I was getting Totemoy, and uh, that day, uh, that day, uh, not even, God, these allergies are bad. Uh, not one hour later, Dr. Kinch came running to my room as my mom had suffered a stroke and had been rushed to the hospital and was really never to leave again. But the last thing I showed her from my life was the awesome Barry's film of the Totemoe ceremony of the awesome students applauding her big-eared son. What an amazing final gift to a mother. And that's just another reminder of the loving eyes of God blessing us in all our walks of life. 
I also see my freshman coach, freshman football coach over here, math teacher, baseball coach, and the man who cut me from my promising basketball career uh, just because I couldn't shoot and couldn't pass and was short. Uh, but he's one of my lifetime heroes, Mr. Tillman. For years I've known I was an awesome baseball player, to be honest with you. I was incredible. Uh, and every decade I got a little bit better in my memory. But I found out that Mr. Tillman had all the uh, uh, stat books from when I played. So I said, hey, can I see him, coach? Pumped. I was really ready to exalt in my greatness, to be honest with you. So I went up and opened them. And uh, as I turned through the pages, I discovered that I struck out half the times I ever batted, and I got caught stealing every time I tried. <laughs> my myth ended that day. Uh, but I love Mr. Tillman. My goal from the moment I returned to NBA was to be as truly sincere and caring to others as Mr. Tillman is to every single soul he meets. I also have to honor John Lanier. Uh, he, it was when he and I were part of the very first soccer team NBA ever had. He was my first soccer coach. And he gave me the love of the sport that has kind of dominated and taken over and been so important to my life. And so I have to thank him for that. And I never thought I'd get to come back and coach beside him, which I did, which was an, an incredible honor. I must also praise Mr. Moxley one of the mentor, finest mentors, guides, and friends who helped me learn how to become an MBA English teacher while staying true to my spirit and beliefs after Mrs. Palmer had gotten me started. I need to thank, obviously, Miss Susan for watching over me every single day when my pitiful face would come pleading at her door for chocolate milk. And George for making me not buy every car I came across. Uh, and I obviously could go on and on uh, as it took this whole village to keep me going and get me where my absent-minded self needed to be and do. And I also need to thank Mark Artisan, showing me how deep a man can care. I especially, obviously, have to thank Mr. Joya for giving this wild man from Colorado, I mean, from California with bushy hair and an absurdly loud voice the opportunity to teach at my home, MBA. And it is my home. But I must say a few more specifics, if you don't mind. After my battle last year, I found the depth of friendship and care that I never imagined, and it all came from the NBA family. First, Giles Cheevers is a man with a heart so deep that I'm honored to be his friend. He is the second person I ever told about having cancer, and as we drank an early morning Thanksgiving coffee standing on the side of the Harpeth River, from that day forward, Giles, and this is not an exaggeration, Giles texted me every single day, and he called me every single day for seven months until Dr. Mellick said I was well. And I mean every single day to check on me, encourage me, and cheer me on, and I needed that more than I can ever say. And the other part of that, while I was sick, Jenny Maddox was beyond incredible. She had to take on her shoulders the kids and families that I'd been working with in college counseling. And she and Leslie and Patrick really took on most of my load even this year on top of their own. And more importantly, though, to be honest with you, and this is a huge thank you that my wife Angela and I have to say. More importantly, she took on and organized my dinners from the moment I got sick until the day I was deemed healthy. And the efforts of the incredible, and this is a lot of people in this room, the incredible and incredibly busy members of this NBA family who took the care and the time to bring Angela and me awesome dinners every single day. You all are my heroes for giving of your time because as we all know, the most, most precious gift we each have to give is our time. In fact, for me, I may be the first cancer patient to have gained 12 pounds. <laughs> As well, and this, this was incredible, a group of NBA mamas created a prayer blanket for me, and the holiness of that blanket was palpable. Whenever I was weak or just tired during the battle, I would wrap myself in that blanket, and I would feel the hand of God upon me. 
And obviously my most important thank you is praising and thanking my awesome wife Angela for being there for me through so many nights of fears and insecurities. She always gave me the peace that I needed and that all would be well. My final vision of God's great gifts to me here at MBA. I got two former students who have meant the world to me forever when they were here and they have each become dear, dear friends. They both are so full in love and passion for others in the world that they are clearly touched by God. From when they were frantic and little seventh graders to the moment two days ago when, we three, when the three of us stood together celebrating an engagement of one of them, these two people, Jake Lawrence and Corey Burton, have become my symbol of nothing can hold any of us back if you care enough to pursue your dreams and place your faith in the hands of God. My final note is this. I lost a good friend of mine this year who was a mentor to me for years in California. He's a great, was a great, great man. His name is Patrick Mitchell. He passed away about two months ago from his own battle. And he gave me a book of simple but sincere lessons of being there for others in this world, of so many people who are hurting, so many people with feelings, so many people with hopes, so many people with pain, and so many people with fear. He gave me the lesson that said, whenever you get ready to speak to someone, whenever you see someone, whenever you see something in their eyes that needs, that just needs you, walk up to them, whether it be friend, whether it be stranger, whether it be classmate, or anywhere in between. The lesson that he taught me is walk up to that person and in your heart say silently to yourself as you look them in the eye. Say silently to yourself before you ever speak. In your heart say, I love you and give a smile. And then care for them and for whatever they have to say. And the truth may be behind their words, they say. Seek that truth. I tell you what, God bless all of you, and I will hold all of you in my heart as the only thank you that I can give to so many incredible souls. And I bless every one of you. God bless you. So thanks to all of you for being here. Thanks to our four honorees uh, for allowing us to remember you today and to honor you. Uh, please stay around. And lastly, let me tell you that we'll have one more time to celebrate them more privately as a faculty when we, and staff when we have a, a luncheon at the end of the year. And we'll give them a gift from the school and, and be happy one more time to be thankful for our time together. Have a great evening.